Lisa Olson was abandoned as a baby. The head of pediatrics at the Kasturba Medical College in India told his staff to euthanize Lisa. But one doctor had compassion on her. He had to be the one to find a home for me. He knew of the Ramabai Mukti Mission in Kedgawan, Pune area of India. The doctor and his intern carried Lisa in a basket for 37 hours through four cities with four types of transportation. They gave me the name Manyata, which means acceptance in the Marathi language. Mukti planned to send Lisa to America to receive medical attention. The only way for me to come to America was if someone adopted me. New York resident Marie Olson could not stop thinking about Lisa. Marie was the director of Hopetown, a camp and school for disabled children. Though 50 years old and never married, the word adopt kept coming to Marie's mind. A letter came to Hopetown with her name in it. And in the letter it specified, would Miss Olson or someone at Hopetown consider adopting Magneta? She saw me in the picture winking and that just melted her heart. Two to three weeks later, my mom was on her way to India. As soon as Lisa arrived in the States, she became Lisa Magneta Olson. My mom would say to me often that, yes, you do have a severe disability, but you also need to focus on your blessings and your capabilities. You're able to feed yourself independently and write, and you have a wonderful family and friends who love you. She would point out a gentleman who couldn't speak. Growing up, Lisa underwent a lot of physical therapy. They taught me actually how to make transfers and I can transfer onto the sofa independently or onto my bed, and, and, um, but I would be perspiring and just huffing and puffing and out of breath, and, and, um, but they would push me to the max. And, but I'm so thankful for my PT and OTs and I don't feel that I would have been as self-sufficient. Physical therapy wasn't the only challenge Lisa faced growing up. When I was 10 years old, I was just um, sexually abused. I just never imagined having that type of experience at that age. Lisa and her mom never discussed the experience until Lisa was 27. She was told that if I wanted to talk about it, I would bring it up. However, in my perception as a young child, I didn't want to upset her and knew that that made her extremely sad. High school actually was a little more challenging. I was sick for about three and a half months. I had even for the first time contemplated suicide. I had told a PE teacher that I wanted to commit suicide, but the reason I did not go ahead with um, those thoughts was, well, first of all, was through prayer. And then secondly, my cousin committed suicide when I was 13 years old and I saw how devastated my family was after his death. I felt that my mom sacrificed so much and I couldn't hurt her in that way. To battle depression and anxiety, Lisa has developed her own strategies. I call it a blessing journal and it helps me to just be reminded of God's blessings in my life, even the small things in life. Someone brings me a cup of coffee or comes and gives me a hug at work. My mom had cared for me all of my life. However, my mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. In 2012, my mom went to be with the Lord. Now she relies on her caregivers. From the moment Lisa wakes up to the moment she sleeps, she needs a caregiver. I don't have family who live in the area. The program that I'm on is through a state-funded agency, and the pay is very low. With the pay being so low, and having to find caregivers on her own. Lisa has a hard time finding enough caregivers. Sometimes she doesn't have the best help. I've had people who have cursed at me and, and stolen and, um, as well. And, uh, but I've also had very loving, godly women who have assisted. Through all the battles and circumstances Lisa has faced in her life, she wants to inspire others. I heard the Lord saying to me that I was supposed to serve in a ministry capacity. Well, at that point, I didn't know what that necessarily meant, but I heard him very clearly. And I prayed whether I should pursue speaking on a full-time basis, and, 
and um, and different ones in 2008 started confirming and um, my prayer. I thought of the concept Manyata Ministries. Manyata is my Indian name and it means acceptance in the Marathi language. Our mission is to deliver God's message of acceptance and love to the nations. My wandering heart's kaleidoscope To black and gray you color hope You're the one that sets the tone For the beat that shakes my bones Like a sky without stars Like a song without a listener Like a diamond in the dark Like no photograph to miss her Oh, I'd wander in complete You're my life, my heart When my life has fogged the glass You're the warmth that makes it pass The clarity that makes me see All the things that life can be I'm like a sky without stars 